Greetings fellow Earthlings and welcome to this tiny garage. Welcome back everybody and thank you for joining me once again on the emotional roller coaster that we refer to as Porsche Repair. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, the short story is we bought this Porsche 911 pre-broken on Craigslist, spent a year and a half rebuilding the engine from scratch with all of your help, thank you. And then I proceeded to break it a few weeks after and so we had to take the engine back out again. And then in episode 65, we fixed the vacuum leak with the help of Kelsey. And then in episode 66, we fixed a couple of oil leaks that we had. And then in episode 67, we replaced the crankshaft sensor, sort of a while you're in there thing. Then in episode 68, we fixed the transmission that I broke. And then this week we do have a while you're in there kind of thing with the heat exchanger hose, but then we're gonna put the engine back in. That metal brick looking thing is the heat exchanger, often called the oil cooler. With the engine in the car, the oil cooler is quite a challenge to get to. It's right behind the passenger side rear seat. That is the main motivation for replacing this hose while the engine is out of the car. My understanding of the role the heat exchanger plays is really twofold. Inside that metal block, the engine oil and the coolant are allowed to flow really close to each other in separate compartments. On startup, that's helpful because both fluids can help each other get up to operating temperature. Once you start redlining up the side of a mountain, the coolant's proximity to the engine oil allows it to remove some of the heat that your right foot is putting in. We talked about the heat exchanger and their O-ring replacement in more detail in episode 38, where we looked at the route that your oil takes through your engine. I mean it, hit that subscribe button. Woohee! It's time to put the engine and transmission back in. Now there's much more detail on this in episode 51 if you want to know the nuts and bolts of it. For those of you remaining who'd like to see the process in less than a minute, here it is. Really just have two bolts at the back for the engine mounts and two bolts at the front for the transmission and that's it. What's different to the first time I put the engine in is really what I didn't take off. So the mufflers and all the whole exhaust system stayed on. Anything that ran off a belt, like the AC compressor and the alternator, all remained in place, and that saved a lot of time. Here's the transmission. I didn't remove that transmission brace this time around, and I was concerned I couldn't get it in, but it was really easy, and again, saved a lot of time. Just talking in the engine mounts there, taking the hydraulic table out of the way, and that's it. You can see here now, that is the hose from the heat exchanger coming all the way from the other side of the engine. And we're just putting that onto the expansion tank. You can see much easier there, that's that hose for the heat exchanger. Here I'm putting on the secondary air blower, essentially a large hair dryer for the engine. Next up is that brake booster hose which those of you who are familiar with Porsche will know that that hose at the top is not a Porsche item. It's a generic one from the local store. There's still a bit of a mystery surrounding how that hose got broken. Hi. Right there, I'm connecting the regeneration valve to the car's fuel system. Those are the passenger side O2 sensors getting connected and clipped in place. This seemed like a good time to get new clips for the mass airflow cable on the airbox. Looking at the bright side, taking the engine out a second time did result in a few bits and pieces like this getting taken care of now rather than later. The comments section down below here is one of the places where I go to to try to figure out what to do next. And that's because of all of you wonderful people putting in ideas and suggestions and right answers right there in the bottom. So if any of you haven't been reading the comments on these videos, there's a lot of interesting information in there from all of you. Now I'm thinking I'm never gonna get round to talking about the comments section if I don't start talking about the comments section. 
And so we're gonna do a handful of comments here this week. We'll see if you guys like it. Let me know in the comments if you want me to keep doing this section. And so we're gonna start off with one from Mike Davies, who is a subscriber and a member of the channel. And so Mike is saying, oh yeah, he's talking about the Scotch Bright pads that I use. And he said that he's uh, using brake cleaner to clean his oil sump plate. And he's ending up with lots of whiskers from the Scotch Bright pads on there. And so what happened uh, is the Scotch Bright pad that I'm using, and I think I'm using the right term there, but it's not the kind of one that you would have in the kitchen, uh, like uh, one of those. It's actually one that comes from the uh, auto parts dealer, or you can get them on Amazon as well. It looks more like that. It's the same thing, but different, uh, certainly much more heavy duty and doesn't leave as much whiskers and residue behind. All right, yeah, so Sam Halgren, hello Sam. Uh, he was asking, oh yeah, so Sam watched the transmission episode and he was asking me if I knew anyone that had a spare nose cone for one of these Getrag six speed manual transmission. He is trying to find one because his is broken. It's like snapped somehow. So if any of you know where there's a nose cone available for sale, uh, let me know in the comment section if you like, and I'll let Sam know. Thank you, hello Sam. All right then, next one. Oh yeah, so Andre Brown uh, said about the transmission episode that yes, you should fill the transmission fluid up to the hole until it flows out. And not only that, where is that one? Oh yeah, the Klaus Jr. said, hey, uh, would you like the entire transmission manual? I'm like, sure. And so uh, Claudio, thank you Claudio, he sent me the entire Porsche transmission manual with all the gory details that I didn't have going in. So thank you very, very much. Oh yeah, so Philippe was asking uh, three weeks ago, where does the music come from? And like in the intro and stuff like that. And so the music on the intro actually comes from Epidemic Sound, which is a, a royalty free music service that I sometimes use. Some of the music in these episodes uh, I wrote, like for example, actually this I didn't write, but in episode five, I wrote a version and played a version of the Top Gun theme, which is a slightly different tempo and slightly different key and all that and different melody to the original so that it wouldn't get picked up with copyright. I just I really wanted the Top Gun theme for that particular uh, section of the, of the uh, video. Next one we have here is from EJM111, whatever that means. And he was saying that he filled up his transmission. He's saying, yes, fill it till the fluid runs out of the hole as well. Thank you very much. He used uh, the uh, Motul 7590. And then he was wondering if the magnet was already in the transmission. And yes, that little donut shaped magnet is part of the transmission. It's there to pick up bits of metal, which it did. It found the spring that I accidentally removed. Before we get back to the video, I'd like all of you to join me in saying a quick hello to David Ballantyne Jr. Hello, David. I think I see you there. Now, I heard from a little birdie that like many of us from time to time, you could do with a little bit of cheering up. And so my daughter made you this. It's a Porsche Carrera GT that she printed with her newfangled 3D printer. And it has movable wheels and a little message that I wrote on there for you. And so don't freak out, but I do have your home address. And so I'm gonna send it to you. See you, David. I would like if you would hit the like button. Thank you. Okay, once the engine's in, we're gonna put the fluids in. If you want all the gory details on this process, check out episode 52. Other than the Liquimoly engine oil, all the other fluids are the Porsche branded items from the Porsche dealer. This is that fancy pink coolant. And then for the power steering fluid, that came from the dealer, as did the brake fluid. It's time, folks. The fuel pump relay has been pulled. Let's turn the key. <laughs> 